What's up everybody, welcome to another video. In this video, I wanna give you some tips on professions. Now this is not really like a profession guide or anything. I just have been going through professions and looking at things and considering things and I wanna give you some just quick tips that I have. This is not a formalized guide, this is literally just you guys, hey, this is what I have so far. So I wanna share it with you in case you need to know and uh, as we get into Dragonflight, and we get into professions, I will most likely make some uh, actual like set guides and stuff in the future. So uh, I've really been enjoying the changes to professions. That's something we'll talk about in a future video. Uh, but I just wanna give you guys some uh, tips and some tricks. So, all right, when we get into the professions, there's a couple of things that I think are important to know, right? So profession systems have changed pretty drastically. Uh, there's a lot going on within them with the main thing that I think needing to be taken into consideration is the new specialization system for professions. So if you don't know what that is, you can come out here to Wowhead and you can go to profession tree calculator actually. And this will show you if you pick a profession like let's just pick herbalism, right? This is a simple gathering profession with this gathering profession. There are now specializations there are specializations for every profession in the game except for the secondary ones cooking fishing and archaeology so the rest of these have specializations when you come in and the way this is going to work is when you hit skill level 25 in your profession you're going to unlock specializations when you unlock specializations you usually have at least three choices but sometimes you have more choices like in the case of blacksmithing there's four different choices here i think engineering has four different choices so it just depends on what you're in but there's going to be at least three specializations for you to choose from now when you come in here you're going to get uh, a bonus for picking a specialization, then you can invest points into the specialization for additional perks and uh, benefits. And then within the specialization, you could pick a sub specialization, which is another little tree that you can invest in. So let's take a look at how this works in general, right? So if we come into herbalism and we want to learn bountiful harvest, we're going to learn bountiful harvest. On this little hub over here, we're gonna get this initial perk right here. Plus five skill while gathering herbs. Now, if we hover over this, we'll see that it says, improve at your general harvesting skills, gaining plus one skill per point in the specialization while gathering herbs. And then for learning uh, the profession right here, on learning a specialization, plus five skill while gathering herbs. So that's our initial bonus, okay? We get plus five skill, and then for every point we put into the Bountiful Harvest tree, which has 40 ranks, you can see it has 40 ranks, we'll get an additional point of skill per uh, rank towards gathering herbs, okay? So when this is said and done, based on what we get from learning and the points investment, we'll get 45 bonus skill for while we're gathering herbs, okay? But that's not it, because when we unlock the specialization, we're gonna get that five. As we invest up to 40 points, we're gonna get the other 40, but every five ranks, we're gonna get something extra. These little things here, these little arrowheads, as I guess what I'm gonna call them, spokes on the wheel, I don't know. Uh, these little arrowheads here will give us a bonus as well. So the small ones usually give us some kind of passive stat bonus or something like that. The large ones give us a actual like new feature that changes the way that we can utilize the profession. So if we put five points in here, you'll see that we're gonna unlock this, learn a subspecialization of your choice. So now we can come in, we've got horticulture, arbor uh, arboriculture, fungiculture and floriculture. I really picked a good one here. <laughs> uh, so we can pick any of these, and if you look at them, they look the same as this one, right? So there is a thing, learn the subtle intricacies of Hochin Bloom, gaining plus one skill per point in the specialization while gathering Hochin Bloom, which is a herb. So this is giving you, each one of these is giving you a bonus to a specific herb. Hochin Bloom, Writhe Bark, Bubble Poppy, and then Saxifrage. So any of these, you're basically specializing in a particular type of herb. 
Then on learning this specialization, you have a chance to gather additional Hojin Bloom. So if we were to pick this, right, and learn horticulture, it gives us an entirely different wheel to invest in that has 40 more points. Okay, so just between these two, there's 80 points of investment, right? So here's here's the thing. When you're looking at your specializations and what you want to go into, you really need to pay attention to what you get when learning the specialization and then really pay attention to what these big arrowheads here are going to give you. Okay, so with Bountiful Harvests, Right, we get the plus five skill. And then if we max it out and we get this one here, we learn to refine herbs up to gold tier. Okay, so we, we get better at creating better quality herbs. If we come over to horticulture, right, this is going to give us the bonuses to Hochen Bloom. So as soon as we unlock this, which we got to do by putting in five points. We can learn it and we get the chance to gather additional Hochen Bloom without putting any points in. We get that bonus right away. OK, and then if we max it out over here, we get plus 10 additional skill while gathering Hochen Bloom. OK, but let's go to botany. If we go to botany and we learn this specialization, let's reset here. It says study effective gathering methods and techniques for the plants of the Dragon Isles, gaining plus one finesse per point in this specialization while gathering herbs. We also get plus 15 deafness while gathering herbs as well. So these are new uh, stats that are available for professions. So let's see, let's go to profession changes. Let's see if we have stats. All right, so we have new stats, uh, gathering stats, finesse. You have a chance to gather more of the primary reagent found Deafness is going to increase your gathering speed. And then there's also perception, which increases your chance to get rare items when you're gathering. Okay. So over here, when we learn this, we're going to get plus one finesse per point. So that's going to increase our chance to get extra herbs when we're gathering. And we're also going to get plus 15 deafness, which is going to increase our gathering speed just from learning this profession. So, or this specialization. So if we learn it, we've got the deafness and then... Uh, we've got no points in, so we don't have any finesse, right? But we put our five points in, and then we can unlock a specialization, right? So for this one over here, this is going to improve our deafness per point invested. And also, we can learn to use tools on plant creatures and gain the ability to get useful herbs and items from them. Over here, we gain perception per point, so increase our chance to get rare items. And then your new knowledge of cultivation techniques allows you to gather seeds more often than before while gathering herbs. So you can see how there's vastly different things here, depending on which one we pick, even when we're just learning the specialization and getting that extra point. OK. But here's the thing. If you look at this one, let's look at the big arrowhead, which usually offers some big stat perk or something that totally changes the way uh, that we can approach this profession. This one here says your mastery of botany is such that you can gather herbs while mounted in the Dragon Isles. And your botanical mastery helps you locate hidden rarities, gaining plus 15 perception while gathering herbs. So literally, if you invest in botany and you max it out, boom, you gain the ability to herb while mounted in Dragon Isles. So when you are investing points in considering what you want to do with these specializations, definitely pay attention to the initial bonus you get because you can get that bonus without investing any sort of additional points into uh, that specialization or subspecialization. Uh, and also pay attention to the features that you're going to get here. And we're going to talk more about these in just a minute. Okay, so. How do you get these points? You get these points a couple different ways. Uh, I'm not going to say this is a comprehensive list because I'm just trying to give you guys some tips. Uh, but for gathering, OK, for gathering, you these are called knowledge points that you're investing in here. See how it says knowledge needed for gathering. You get points when you the first time you harvest. 
uh, each of the different types of nodes in each variant. So I'm not gonna get into this too much, but basically uh, one of the herbs is called Hochin Bloom. Okay, so the first time you gather a Hochin Bloom, you'll get a knowledge point. Then if you gather the fire variant of Hochin Bloom, you'll get another knowledge point. When you gather the wind version, you'll get another one. When you gather the lush version, you'll get another one. So for each of the different herbs or each of the different um, uh, ores that are out there, you get a knowledge point the first time you gather from each of the different variants. It's a pretty good amount of um, knowledge points that you can get from gathering. Also, while you're gathering, you have a chance to get a rare item from the, the herb or the mine um, or the skin that will allow you to use it and it'll give you a knowledge point. Okay, so for gathering, you basically just go out there, you just gather stuff, you try to find all the variants to get as many knowledge points as you can to put those in. There are additional quests and uh, activities at end game that will reward knowledge points as well. Uh, and then also there is an item that can be crafted by inscriptionists, I believe that will allow you to consume it to gain a knowledge point as well. These knowledge points, you will eventually be able to get enough of them to max out every specialization and every subspecialization, but it is going to take a long time, okay? So you need to be very careful about where you invest uh, your knowledge points because there's also no respec for knowledge points, okay? You cannot reset your knowledge points and put them into a different tree. They are really kind of like doubling down on like you're committed to the specialization that you choose and being an expert at that thing. So if you come into blacksmithing and you decide that you're going to pick up armor smithing and you're going to be great at crafting armor and then you invest further in and you say, you know what, uh, I think I'm going to I'm going to invest in the fine armor. So I'm going to be really good at creating fine armor, which is gonna allow me to make good stuff for the waist, wrist, and hands, okay? And then you come in and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna be the best gauntlet maker on my server. These points are invested. You can't pull them out and then decide, you know what, actually, I wanna go over here and I wanna do large plate armor. And then with large plate armor, I wanna be the guy who makes the best shields on the server. You can eventually learn everything, but as you can see, this is a lot of points. It's a lot of points, okay? So be very thoughtful. Uh, be very considerate when you're thinking about which specializations you want to invest in and the character that you're on because you cannot get these knowledge points back currently, okay? So for Herbalist, you get those knowledge points that way um, through gathering and getting the different types of nodes, okay? If you're on a crafter, you get a knowledge point the first time you craft each recipe. Okay, so it is worth it for you to craft one of everything because it gives you a knowledge point. If you are looking at your profession window and you click on the recipe, there'll be a little book and it'll say first craft. If it says first craft, that means that it will give you a knowledge point when you craft it. So if you've already been crafting and doing things and you didn't know about this, you can just go back through your recipe book, click on each of the items, and if you see the book that says first craft, then you should craft that item to get yourself a knowledge point, okay? So that's kind of like how this system works, uh, just kind of a brief overview. What I wanted to give to you guys is some of the information I've kind of collected on the opportunities you have for these specializations when it comes to playing them on a active character versus a passive character. I fully believe in Dragonflight that you can have a character who their entire end game is literally just crafting now and like being the best shield guy on the server. Like it's super cool. I've got a lot to say about the profession system, but I totally think that you could just have a character now that just only does professions 
And it's not just a matter of like, oh, I just follow the leveling guide and I grind. There's so much in here now of like being able to improve quality and get into your specializations and unlock different things. And then being able to like uh, add secondary stats and just do all this. There's, there's so much going on that I feel like it's, it's, it's always, you could always have an alt character that just did professions, but now I feel like you can have an alt character that does professions and it can feel engaging and feel like an actual like end game. And this is only the base that they got for Dragonflight. So I'm really excited about this. But what I wanted to tell you is some of the things that I found when going through and looking at the different specializations that might influence you to do a profession on an active character that you play. Okay, so we're going to go through these. And I'm going to just kind of run through this for you guys. Okay, so the obvious ones, right? And herbalism, uh, mining, and skinning, right? You need to put these on a character that you're actively going to go gather with, right? Otherwise, um, you're not going to get any materials. So if you want to do any of these, you need to put it on a character you're actually going to play. Herbalism, botany, max it out. This will give you the ability to mount or to herb while mounted. Okay. So this is like the first place I would put those points. It's up to you. You can go a different direction if you want, but being able to herb while mounted is really, really nice. Uh, so I'd recommend that. In mining, uh, mining process right here. This is the one you max this one out and you're able to gather while mounted. Uh, you you can mine while mounted on this one. Okay. This is 35 points. Skinning doesn't have anything like that because you know, it, that, that's not how it works. Right. Um, however, skinning does have with harvesting, putting, uh, an initial point into harvesting gives you increased damage against beast and dragon kin while outdoors in the dragon isles which if you're skinning you're killing beast and dragon kin you really only need to put the one point in there uh to get the damage bonus uh that doesn't like continue on you get different like stats from there um you get another harvesting point here for increased damage if you want it but that's pretty much it so i'd recommend putting an initial like just even if it's zero, learn this specialization. Uh, you will unlock the ability to learn another specialization. I believe you need to be um, skill of 50, I think is what it is to unlock another specialization. Um, so you can, you can switch off on that, but this will give you the damage bonus, okay? So obviously you need to be on a character that's actively playing for those gathering professions. Okay, but there's actually a couple other ones uh, that work like this as well. So in alchemy, we have potions, files, and then we have alchemical theory. So potions are potions, health potions, mana potions. Files are the equivalent of flasks. So these are the, um, the, the alchemical consumables that last a long time, right? And they last 30 minutes. But by investing into the vial mastery, your uh, vials will last 30 minutes longer. Uh, and you can actually get these to extend out to, I believe two hours. I don't know where that's at, but, uh, that's what I was reading on Wowhead is that as the person who, uh, is the alchemist, you can get your files to last up to two hours. Okay. There's also some uh, specific equipment you can get that I'm not sure. Don't quote me on this. I don't know if it's specific to the alchemist or not, but you can get some equipment that basically as you um, as things happen, uh, you're able to uh, get little extensions to your vials as well. Uh, so this one I'm not 100 percent craft uh, um, confident about about whether or not like this makes your files last longer no matter who uses them or if it's specific to you but i would definitely look into this and consider it uh before you know you just write it off as something you can do on an alt i personally put um alchemy on my main character in order to have this benefit uh blacksmithing doesn't really have anything um in here that is going to matter to you for playing an active character versus one that just sits in town and crafts uh, pretty much everything in here is just bonuses to making different types of uh, armor, weapons, and equipment. 
or being better at doing those things. Uh, Enchanting does have a thing that will benefit you for playing on an active character. Now, obviously with Enchanting, the more active your character is, the more drops they're gonna get, the more they're gonna be able to disenchant stuff. They'll also be able to disenchant soulbound stuff that they get from dungeons or that they get from quests, you know, because you can funnel all your BOEs and stuff from your alt characters into your Enchanter, but there's an obvious benefit from uh, putting enchantment on a character that you're actively going to be questing and doing dungeons and stuff with because they're just going to wind up with more gear for you to disenchant. However, there is an additional bonus here in Insight of the Blue. So Insight of the Blue has this first thing right here. So improve at perceiving magical sources, allowing you to discover mystic items from enemies and treasures in the Dragon Isles that can be disenchanted into reagents. Gain plus 1% chance to locate mystic items per point in this specialization. Okay, on learning the specialization, you increase your magical perception, gaining a small chance to locate mystic items that can be disenchanted into reagents. So you get an initial, like, I can discover these, and then for each point invested in, which is 50, so you, you'll get a 50% plus the baseline chance to discover mystic items from enemies and treasures. So if you're not out there killing enemies and getting treasures, this is totally useless for you. So this is another area where playing a active character with enchantment will give you a potential way to gather uh, more ingredients or have a bonus uh, from playing this. So uh, as you continue in this, I believe you get subs your subspecializations, you get a plus 5% chance to locate mystic items right there and plus 10% at the cap. So you get 50, you get the baseline, you get 50 from the points, and then you get an additional 15% from investing in the tree and hitting these nodes. So that's quite a bit to get these items that you can disenchant into reagents for enchanting, along with the gear and stuff that you're gonna get anyway. So it's a, it's a supplemental way to get resources. I think this is really, really nice. Uh, engineering doesn't really have anything specific that comes down, in my opinion, to like, making you want to play engineering on an active character other than the fact that engineering is just designed for playing on an active character really what's the point of making all the gizmos and gadgets if you're not going out to use them right a lot of the stuff you can send to other characters but some stuff in engineering is just for the engineer or you have to have engineering to use it so in my opinion that just encourages you to play engineering on a character that you actually go play and do stuff with in addition, there's some uh, sub specializations uh, here that allow you to do stuff like use explosives and items with less chance of them backfiring and exploding on you, which obviously is not going to benefit anyone except for yourself. So like this one here, short fuse uh, on the learning the specialization, gain a better understanding of how to handle your own death traps, reducing the likeliness of bombs exploding in your face. Well, if you're not going out and fighting things and using bombs, it doesn't matter if they're going to explode in your face, right? So uh, this is, again, there's plenty of stuff in engineering that you can create that doesn't really require you to do anything. And you're not actively getting a bonus like you are from the two hour buff or from getting the additional uh, enchanting materials that you can turn into reagents. There's nothing really like that, but I think engineering just plays better on an active character. Uh, anyway, uh, we talked about herbalism. Inscription has uh, nothing that I could find that gives you a bonus for playing on an active character. So this is absolutely a profession that you could just sit in town and just do your inscription stuff, funnel everything in from an alt character if you want to, and you'll be totally fine. Uh, same thing with jewel crafting. Uh, I didn't really find a bonus for like going out and actively like getting involved in content uh, that would really help you with uh, jewel crafting. It looks like you could just funnel in um, ores and things like that to your jewel crafter and you'll be totally fine. Uh, same thing with leatherworking. So leatherworking is also another one that uh, I believe you could just sit in town and craft. So um, the four here that we've got so far, blacksmithing, uh, jewel crafting inscription and leatherworking. These are definitely like you can sit in town and just be like 
a kick butt crafter and so if you have a character that you want to play as a character that's going to be their end game any of these four professions is really good uh inscription or sorry not inscription engineering and alchemy are potentially good ones as well um because you don't really get a bonus for actively going out and doing anything. So if you're not worried about having the two hour flash time or file time, if you don't care about that at all, then, you know, you could just sit back and make potions and stuff. And if you don't really care about using the bombs and gadgets, you can just sit back and make that stuff as well. I do think enchanting actively benefits from being on an active character for sure. Um, just from getting that inside of the blue and then all of the gathering professions as well. Uh, so, uh, the last one here is tailoring and tailoring is another one that I think will benefit from you playing it on an active character. Okay. So the reason for this is I got to find the right one. I forget which one it is. It's one of these, uh, masteries. Oh, why the heck is it? <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Sorry, it's a sub specialization. Uh, so tailoring in tailoring mastery. I was in the right spot here, right? Uh, so tailoring mastery is going to give you plus skill and then you get plus skill when crafting uh, goods, right? But that's not really like the big deal. Okay, so one, you learn a uh, passive when you pick up tailoring that increases your odds of gathering cloth from humanoids. But once you get into tailoring mastery, and you don't have to invest all the points in here. Let's unlearn this. You can just unlock it, put your five points in, right? Uh, actually, it's going to be 10 points in. And that's going to allow you to get a subspecialization. The subspecialization you want here is going to be cloth collection. So cloth collection says learn to collect cloth more effectively, increasing the amount of cloth found on humanoids in the Dragon Isles by 1% per point in this specialization. And it's a 50 point specialization. So you get 50% from investing all your points in the cloth collection. And then on learning this specialization, learn to sometimes collect particularly damaged forms of wilder cloth that can be used for unraveling, which is what creates your threads. So you can come in and learn this. And then, uh, as you get points in here, increase the amount of cloth you find by 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 20%, 10%, 20%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10
world quests, I have renown activities, I have in-game quests, I have dungeons, I have raids, I have mythic plus, I have PvP, uh, I need to go gather stuff, I need to work on my profession, I've got side quests that I'm doing, like, just keeps on going up and up and up the amount of activities that I'm doing on this one character. And if you only play one character, then I mean, that's obviously probably fine. But if you're like me and you want to play a wide variety of characters it, in to me, it's just overwhelming to, you know, I might go out and want to do this world quest and I'm getting distracted by nodes and stuff all the time. So I kind of wanted to look at this like in my army of alts, when I log onto this character, this is what I'm doing with this character. I know this is what I'm doing with this character and I can ignore everything else. So for my main character, I was like, what do I want to do on my main character? I want to do in-game quests, like continue the campaign. I want to do world quests. I want to do renown activities. And then I want to do instance content, right? Dungeons, raids, that kind of stuff. So when I log into this character, what I want to do is just focus on content, on actual like content, quests and things. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to get distracted by, oh, there's a node, there's a node, here's a node, there's a node, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I want to get some benefits from playing on this character because I'm going to be doing those types of content. So I went with alchemy on this character because... Uh, I can get the bonus duration on flasks or files, and that's going to benefit me in instance content. That also can just benefit me while I'm out doing all these quests, right? I can just load up a file, uh, improve my stats as I go out to do world quests and renown activities. I can kill stuff faster, survive longer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I also picked up enchanting on this character. So uh, enchanting, going into enchanting and getting the inside of the blue is the direction I'm headed on this character because as I go out to do these quests or as I'm in dungeons and things like that, as I'm going out to get treasures, which are gonna show up anyway, um, and do all that stuff, I have a chance to get all these additional reagents that I can use in uh, enchanting. And on top of that, I'm gonna get all this soulbound gear from dungeons and quests and things like that that may or may not be an upgrade. So that's gonna give me a big source of disenchantable gear that I can use for reagents as well. And I don't have to worry about funneling a bunch of BOEs into a character because I'm gonna actively play this character. So that was a combination I went with for my main character. Okay, so alchemy and enchanting. Then the next character that I kind of want to talk about here is a traditional one, uh, but I think it's a good combo. And this is the herbalist and miner combo. So herbalism and mining on the same character. When I log into this character, I'm literally just flying around looking for nodes. You know, if that's all I want to do, then that's all I'm going to do. And I can gear my build. I can gear my actual gear stats and everything towards that. And because this is... Um, Dragonflight, and we've got the specializations. I'm gonna go straight into botany, max that out for the mounted herbing, and then go for mining. I'm gonna go straight into mining process and max that out for the mounted uh, mining. So on this character, I'll be able to fly around. I'll be able to just look at my mini map for nodes, and I'll be able to uh, collect both herbs and mines while mounted. So I literally would never have to dismount unless I get into a fight or something. Uh, which at that point, it shouldn't be too big of a deal, right? So this character, I just get in and pff, I just do nodes. The next character, uh, that combo that I put together was skinning, or yeah, skinning and tailoring. Okay, and the idea behind this is this character, I get on this character and I just go grind mobs, right? If I need skins, I go grind beasts. If I need cloth, I go grind humans, humanoids, right? So either way, this character is going to be fully geared for like AOE pool combat, like 100%. Uh, this is actually what I'm doing with my druid. I went with bear druid. My uh, bear druid is also a Zandalari troll, so he gets bonus gold drops. So basically, I just go out. I pick an area. I'm like, you know what? This has got beast or dragons in it, so I'm going to go grind this out, and I'm going to get, you know, a all these skins and I'm gonna get additional gold or hey, I need cloth. So I'm gonna take them out to this area and I'm gonna grind these humanoids and get a bunch of cloth drops and additional gold. And so that's the whole goal with this character. So I'm not I'm not really splitting my focus between all these different things. It's like this dude is 100% 
every single thing I can give to him is for AOE pull just destruction, right? Whereas with the Herbalist Miner, it's like, okay, everything I can give here is going to be like evasion, speed, you know, being able to boost anything I can to, you know, movement speed and, and you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and then my main character obviously has the focus on quest. So those are just some of the combinations that I come came up with that I thought worked very well, considering the um, the specializations and sub specializations. Uh, I said this was the last section, but I actually have one more here, uh, one more thing to talk about. Um, and that's going in to the areas where I think it is pretty valuable to have multiple characters that have different uh, that have the same profession, right? Because when you go in here, obviously it's going to take a lot of points to get into these different things. And you may eventually have enough knowledge to cover the entire tree, but that's going to take a long time. So in some cases, in my opinion, it makes sense to have multiple characters uh, that are going to have the same profession because you can go in different directions with them and they're going to feel pretty different. So with alchemy, you've got a difference between potions and vials. To be honest, I'm not sure like how big of a difference that is. I think a major concentration is on vials. So in my opinion, like you probably don't need multiple alchemists in order to do this. Um, you could just get on one, focus on vials and then move along to whatever else after the fact. For blacksmithing, I mean, absolutely, you could have multiple blacksmiths because you have armor smithing, and then in armor smithing, you have three different sub specializations that have three different sub specializations apiece. Then you have weapon smithing as well, which goes into blades or goes into hafted and has these. And then, addition to that, you have specialty smithing, which is focused on everything that's not a martial good like armor or weaponry so i could easily seeing have having a armor smithing character and a weapon smithing character and i feel like out the gate you're gonna have a lot of points and a lot of stuff to invest in uh where those two characters will feel vastly different for enchanting i i personally think that you're good with one so you have a tree that kind of focuses on uh, creating uh, your combat enchantments and your profession equipment. You have inside of the blue, which is, you know, all about your gathering and stuff. And then you have one that's like rods, runes, cosmetics, and stuff like that. I feel like you could tackle this all on one enchanter. Uh, engineering has a couple of different ones here. I could see having, you know, maybe two engineers if you are really focused on like the explosives or if you're really ex ex uh, focused on the gadgets or gear. There's a couple different ways you could go here. Um, so you could have more than one engineer. I don't know if it's, you know, necessary. A lot of the stuff in engineering is fun and a lot of it I just end up not using as well. So, uh, kind of a mixed bag there for herbalism. Uh, I think that you could have a couple of different ones here, depending on what you want. So you obviously want to get the, uh, mounted, um, botany one here, but then after that you have a tree that focuses on, um, extracting more herbs and improving their quality. And then you have one that focuses on harvesting the, the elemental um, reagents that you can get from the different types, the different variants of herbs as well. So uh, you could have the one character that comes in and focuses on botany and then kind of goes into the bountiful harvest and getting into some different uh, specific plants. And then you could have an alternate one that just focuses on getting the elemental herbs so, you know, if you're trying to harvest a lot, you go out on the mounted character that has these perks. But if you're looking for rares, you can just take out your, you know, kind of rare farming uh, herbalist as well. With inscription, I'm honestly not too sure. There's a couple different things going on in uh, inscription, but one of the big things that they can offer, uh, I don't think is like a um, specialization. So you have the rune mastery here. Uh, this is going to... Uh, I, I honestly don't remember. I know that inscriptionists can specialize in creating these items that allow you to specify what the secondary stats are going to be when you're crafting an item, and that's going to be pretty huge. Um, and then they also are going to have like their, um, you know, their typical uh, ability to make sta staffs, contracts, all that kind of stuff. You could maybe do one or two. Uh, I'm really, this is the one I'm going to say I'm not very competent at, so I don't want to give you like some misinformation here. Um, I'm not sure one or two. I don't, I don't know. 
I lost a lot of interest in inscription when they stopped being able to do glyphs, and I'm pretty behind, I think, on my information there. Uh, jewel crafting. Uh, I feel like this is probably like a one character uh, profession. Uh, you could maybe break it out into two. Uh, there's things for improving the quality and cuts of your gems. Um, there's also stuff by, you know, increasing your prospecting. There's setting, which is a new thing here. Uh, you can get really good at this. They have the ability to create these items that allow you to socket up the three gems in your neck piece. Uh, but in general, I think you could probably just get by with one character on this. Leatherworking, I think you could easily have two characters because leatherworking is split between leather and mail, and that's an easy division where you could have one character specializing in leather and you could have another one specializing in, specializing in mail. And for both of them, there's some additional stuff in here as well. There's the primordial leatherworking, which applies to both leather and mail. It lets you uh, collect like the elemental items from the beasts. And then leather armor crafting is all about like uh, efficiency and quality. But just between, uh, or sorry, leatherworking discipline is all about efficiency and quality. So then you have leather armor crafting, which you can see is a pretty big tree. And then you also have same size tree for male armor crafting. So you could have two there as well. Mining is pretty much the same as herbalism, where you have the mining process to get the mounted mining. And then you have the ability to um, increase your efficiency as a miner, which I think pairs well with the one that's going to be able to mounted mine. But then you also have the elemental one as well. So you could have your like efficiency miner and then you could have a elemental uh, miner as well. And then skinning has quite a few things in here. I don't know how much of an investment these are all going to take. 40 points, 40 points, 40 points. Uh, harvesting looks like 40, 40, 40, 40. And then bait is going to be 40, 40, 40. So um, within skinning, you have a couple of different things going on. So you have your harvesting for your... Um, you know damage against beasts and stuff but then within this you have a couple of interesting things in here so trophy collector allows you to get species specific reagents you've got meat carver which increases your chance to gather meat and then you've got uh lure crafter which increases your chance to gather bite-sized morsels which you can use to create fishing lures so just in here you have like rare items that are specific to the mobs. You have meat collection for cooking primarily. And then you have a, another sub specialization here for getting morsels for fishing. So that's already like three different directions you can go just in harvesting. But then if we come over to tanning, tanning is like your efficiency tree uh, where you're gonna increase your leather quality and your amount that you can gather and stuff like that. And then you have bait crafter, which is actually a tree that's not focused on fishing bait. It's focused on creating bait to call out elusive creatures, um, which have a chance to drop really nice items on them and also from the skinning of them as well. So you could again have a character that's focused on efficiency and then gathering like you know a particular type of thing from the enemies and then you could have like sort of the rare spawn bait crafting skinner as well and then with tailoring uh i think tailoring it depends here um i think you could have a couple of tailors honestly you could have the one that goes out and collects all the materials via tailor mastery and cloth collection. And then you have like the garment crafting one, which is focused on actually making cloth garments, if that's something you want to do. But then in addition to that, I want to say it is, is it under textiles? No, textiles is your uh, efficiency, I believe. One of these. It might be in garment crafting. I'm not sure, but one of these trees um, improves the cooldowns. You know, you have your cooldowns uh, for crafting on creating the special types of cloth. So you could have a character that focuses on reducing that cooldown as much as possible while you have a different uh, character that's focused on the overall collection um, of the cloth um, as a drop. So... 
lots of stuff going on in progressions this is a 45 minute video so far and like we haven't like broken down specifics about professions there's just a lot going on and i wanted to give you guys as many tips as i had from the research i've been doing and the stuff that i've collected if i got anything wrong definitely throw it in the comment section below i'm not claiming to be an expert at this by any means uh, there's still some nuances that the wow community as a whole just doesn't have figured out yet so this is just kind of what i've collected over the past week or so week or two weeks of dragonflight being out um and uh, i just started to really get into my professions as well man we haven't talked about crafting orders we haven't talked about anything but i really just wanted to let you know this information about what you really need to consider for professions uh let you know which professions have benefits for playing on an active player which professions um combinations i came up with that i think are going to work really well and then also which professions may benefit from you having multiple characters do those professions uh so that's what i got for you in this video i know it's a lot let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you for watching the video. I appreciate your time and I will see you on the next one.